Hey guys, it's Dave. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for continuing to watch. I really appreciate it. Hope you're having a great week so far. Today, I'm bringing you another edition of Space Stock Updates, where I focus on publicly traded space companies that investors can get their hands on if they should wish to. And we have a ton of updates for you today including stuff from Rocket Lab, Amazon's Kuiper, Planet Lab's disappointing quarterly results, Firefly standing ready, and much more. Before we get into that, though, I hope you'll consider subscribing and liking this video. Every one of those does help out a lot. And with that out of the way, let's dive into this edition of Space Stock Updates. Hey everyone, this is Editor Dave here cutting in from the next day after I filmed the initial space news update segment. And uh, I guess I've made the cardinal mistake here, I'm realizing now, of waiting till the next day to edit and publish my footage that I made yesterday. Because we've had a ton of recent updates that I haven't been able to cover in this edition of Space Talk News. We have Peter Beck selling some shares of Rocket Lab. I think I'm going to do a live stream of that to talk about it very shortly. We have a massive Telesat contract to talk about and so much more. So Yes, I know, unfortunately, I didn't get to those items, but I will be talking about them, and I still do think there's a lot of good information in the rest of this segment, so I hope you do enjoy it and get something out of it. Thanks for watching again. Let's continue with the video. Okay, guys, starting off with our first story today. I put it first just because I found this one extremely interesting, and sorry for the big ad bar along the top of the screen here. I hate it when websites do this, take away like almost a third of the page, but anyway, that's just a uh, pet peeve of mine. So what we're talking about today is the big Amazon Kuiper lawsuit. If you haven't heard about this, basically what's happening is that Amazon shareholders are suing Jeff Bezos and the board of directors. So Bezos or Bezos? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, they're suing the board of directors saying that they didn't uh, complete their fiduciary duties to shareholders. So the backstory on this is, if you're not aware, Amazon's working on a big internet satellite constellation, their answer to SpaceX's Starlink, and Bezos and Musk also have a bit of a feud going, don't seem to really like each other very much, maybe it's just a you-know-what measuring contest or something like that, but um, <laughs> anyway, uh, Amazon a while back gave out an absolutely historically massive set of launch contracts to three companies to launch their Kuiper Constellation. Now, these three companies are obviously Jeff Bezos's own Blue Origin. Then we have ULA with their upcoming Vulcan rocket. And we also have Ariane Space with their upcoming Ariane 6 rocket. And the interesting thing all three of these launchers have in common is they're not ready yet, you know, they don't exist. So that's caused a lot of delays. We've had delay after delay on all three of these rockets actually, causing the Constellation launch dates to get pushed back. Amazon's working with some deadlines. But beyond even the delays, the price tag for these launchers is absolutely massive. They're talking about $10 billion for the three launches combined is the ballpark figure. And just to put that in perspective, that's over three times Rocket Lab's value. So Amazon could buy Rocket Lab three times for the amount of money they're paying to launch these satellites into orbit, never mind manufacturing and all the rest. And uh, they could buy ULA as well for that amount. Uh, really crazy amounts of money, and likely they could have done it cheaper if they had decided to launch on SpaceX's Falcon 9. So... Uh, the board did approve these contracts. Apparently, they approved the contracts in something like under an hour in terms of a uh, accountability meeting with or something like that. So they didn't spend a lot of time on it. No one even suggested launching SpaceX. And this pension fund, which is a large shareholder in Amazon, is basically suing them, saying, you know what? You, you, you gave in to Jeff Bezos and his ego, his demands, and you're not doing your job for the shareholders, which is really to get the best value 
for your dollar when it comes to these launches. Instead, you've agreed to pay too much to these other launchers. And not only that, Jeff Bezos is on both sides of the negotiating table, negotiating on behalf of Blue Origin and negotiating on behalf of Amazon, and basically just gave his own company the launch contracts at too much money. And uh, I've seen a lot of frivolous lawsuits in my time. They do come up a lot. People looking to kind of just get a settlement, get some cash. Maybe they're hoping the company doesn't want to go through the legal process, doesn't want to go through having bad publicity and all this other stuff. I think this is a very uh, legitimate lawsuit, in my opinion. I actually do have some Amazon shares left in my account. And, you know, as a shareholder myself, uh, yeah, this launch contract is wild. It's so much money. None of these rockets are ready. SpaceX is the market leader right now. Electron is too small to launch these satellites. So uh, from that perspective, I do think... Um, Jeff and the board have not really done their duty and done right by Amazon shareholders with these deals. Of course, I was hoping, as I said in previous videos, because of the delays on these three rockets, Rocket Lab and their Neutron, when it's ready, will get some launches for Amazon's Kuiper Constellation. I'm still hoping that's the case. Uh, Amazon will be in quite the launch crunch. But again, uh, if anything comes from this lawsuit in terms of Amazon giving in and agreeing to launch on Falcon 9, that could potentially be a little bad for Rocket Lab. Although I think more likely uh, Amazon would just have to pay out shareholders and this pension fund some money uh, in terms of a settlement. I would think that would be the more likely, you know, outcome, but again, I'm not a lawyer, so we'll have to see how this plays out. Very interesting stuff. I do think the egos on these billionaires sometimes gets a little out of check. And uh, next up, Rocket Lab announces their next launch. This is happening extremely quickly after their previous launch for Capella Space as well. The launch is called We Will Never Desert You. I always love these badges. They look super cool. This one's also going to be launching out of New Zealand, Launch Complex 1, Mahai, Electron, and... Um, very glad to see that the cadence is picking up because Rocket Lab does need to continue launching regularly in order to hit that 15 launch mark for the year that we're looking to hit. So Rocket Lab just kind of quietly chugging away in the background as we have some of that drama around Amazon and SpaceX. We also got some fresh views from the previous Electron launch. I did live stream this and there's a lot of new camera footage that I love. So if you didn't see any of this, some pretty cool stuff with the stage separation and we can see the first stage falling back to Earth. This was a recovery mission. So this stage was a eventually recovered and uh, I believe they're looking at reusing either the engines or the whole stage. We'll get more information on that lately, but some really cool views. Very glad that uh, Rocket Lab updated their presentation and their footage that they're providing on these webcasts, kind of in stark contrast to SpaceX, which has gone with X only getting rid of YouTube and the quality of those live streams has actually gone down as opposed to up. And then we have some idiot here named Dave G posting on Twitter uh, talking about Planet Labs. So they did crater, as you can see here, after their most recent earnings call, dropping all the way down from 3.1-ish per share down to 2.5-ish. So that's almost a 20% drop. Definitely never like to see a fifth of the value of the company disappear in one day. So what was so bad about Planet's results? Well, well, there's a few things people didn't like. On the face of it, it didn't seem too bad at first. So the company made revenues of $53.8 million, falling a little bit short of the $54 million expected. But honestly, $200,000, not very much. It's almost right on in terms of revenues. But they did lose $0.14 cents per share, which was more than the $0.08 cents per share analysts were looking for. So a little disappointing on that front. But even more disappointing, I think, than the quarterly results is talking about future forecasting and by the way this was these revenues were up only about 11 percent year over year if you do remember when planet first went public they forecasted with their investor SPAC presentation 40 percent annual year over year growth rate so 11 percent you know just over a quarter of the growth they were originally forecasting that's pretty rough and it's really uh, the growth prospects for the future i believe here 
that investors and analysts are so worried about. Now, most analysts still do have a buy on the stock, although they have adjusted their price targets downwards. And I do want to take a deeper dive on these earnings and Planet in general in the future, as I am a small shareholder, just about $2,000 worth of shares I bought into it, and I am down on those now. So if you're a Planet investor, yes, I am there with you, although it is a small small position for me compared to the likes of Rocket Lab and others. Hopefully I'll get some time to dig deeper into Planet Lab's financials and decide what I want to do with the company. I will admit though, I'm a little disappointed with these numbers. Uh, they are saying they're still going to be on track to go profitable. They still do have a good amount of cash in the bank. There's no danger of going out of business anytime soon. And they are kind of cutting back and really just trying to focus on the core uh, higher gross margin business model, um, investing less, but trying to become profitable at the same time. The full year guidance is a decline of about $10 million from previous guidance. And obviously people forecast that out into the future. So that would affect what they imagine Planet will make next year. Although I will say the uh, pipeline for new customers still remains strong according to the company. So that could be one bright spot. Okay, now I just want to talk about three companies where uh, if you saw a previous video I made last week, I talked about three companies getting close to their moment of truth. They're starting to run out of capital, run out of runway. They would either need to raise new money, become profitable, or go out of business. Those were the only three options. And what do you know, uh, all three of them raising money this week. So I guess I was kind of onto something here, uh, you know, not just a pretty face. <laughs> so uh, Momentus, uh, first of all, they did reg regain compliance with the NASDAQ rules by increasing their share price above $1, doing a reverse split, I believe. But Momentus still very much in a lot of trouble. They did raise five million dollars which really is almost nothing for a space company you know if you're talking about launching satellites developing new technologies five million does not go very far so i don't know if they were just unable to raise more obviously this does represent dilution it's extremely needed for the company to stay afloat so um you know, the stock price didn't react too favorably to this, but uh, definitely I think they will need more money in the not too distant future. I still am very worried for Momentus. And then as well, Astra Space here are going to be issuing more shares and diluting investors in order to raise capital. I believe the number they are looking to raise, yes, $100 million. So that's a more substantial sum and investors will probably have mixed feelings about it on the one hand, very much needed in order to stay afloat. I did look at their balance sheet in that last video I mentioned previously, and things were looking pretty grim, like maybe a quarter left, like a quarter of runway left of cash. Uh, this will go a long way, especially if they can continue to cut those costs like they did in the last quarter. One thing I will say for them is they did manage to cut costs and reduce their burn rate a decent amount. So hopefully this 100 million can get them through a while longer until profitability, but this will be some major dilution for investors. And by the way, we just had a reverse split on Astra, which obviously raises the share price. Issuing new shares does the opposite. It lowers the share price because now there's more shares available. You're basically doing the opposite. So, you know, you can't just keep reverse splitting, issuing new shares, reverse splitting, issuing new shares. You can't just do that forever. Eventually, no one's going to want to buy your stock. It doesn't really work like that. Um, but we'll see if they can make this work until they can get profitable with their spacecraft engine division. The third of those three companies that was looking like it was a little light on the balance sheet, Redwire Space, is in a bit of a better place than Astra and Momentus. And um, I, their stock does reflect that, still sitting in the threes as opposed to the sub $1 range. Actually bringing in revenues is very nice. But again, still burning capital, still need more. So they are actually raising the most money of the bunch, looking at $400 million in common stock, preferred stock warrants, all this stuff, issuing shares, um, dilution, all the rest. So 
again, with all these companies, it always says they can issue or do these from time to time on or after the effective date, especially for Astra and Momentus, from time to time is probably basically immediately. Uh, this one could be more in smaller chunks on an ongoing basis. We'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, they give themselves the option to continue raising money over the next while. They may not do the whole 400 million all at once. With this amount of funding, I do think Redwire should be looking into be looking to be on much more stable ground. Although, again, dilution to the shareholders always that double-edged sword. We also did have another successful flight from Virgin Galactic. Congratulations to them. There's some pretty cool views if you want to check out the videos on Twitter or X or YouTube. Getting to be, you know, a little bit commonplace so that's kind of uh, I guess the definition of success is when you get used to these views and used to these launches launching at about a one per month rate right now so we had three astronauts on Galactic 03 of course there's been four missions but the fourth was a test and oh three of them were you know active commercial missions so we had Ken Baxter from the United States Timothy Nash from South Africa and Adrian Raynard from the United Kingdom the stock in terms of Virgin Galactic still not faring too well, uh, but they have at least been able to raise large amounts of capital. So although they're burning quite a lot of money right now, they still have a few more quarters before things start to look pretty dire. And Firefly Aerospace is getting ready for their responsive launch on, on their Alpha vehicle. If you remember, this rocket did launch previously everything seemed good the payloads were released and put into orbit but they did not end up in the proper orbit and they re-entered earth's atmosphere much sooner than expected leading most of us to call the mission a failure because if your satellite doesn't get where it's supposed to go and burns up in the atmosphere after just a couple days by most measures that is a failure although yes they did reach orbit Anyway, the next launch of this is coming up now as Firefly Aerospace is on what they would call a uh, standby period here. They're going to try and demonstrate responsive launch capability for the U.S. Air Force, which basically is demonstrating the capability of being able to launch on short notice, replacing any satellites that have been damaged, shot down, burned up in the atmosphere, whatever have you. Uh, having the capability to deploy and uh, replace additional satellites as needed, an important capability, uh, an important capability for the military. So, although this mission has been promoted as a 24-hour call-up, it is being planned in multiple stages, and the companies have spent months rehearsing and preparing. The intent of the demonstration is to help the Space Force and the space industry contractors figure out processes to accelerate the planning and execution of national security missions. Also mentioning that uh, at any point in time during the next six months, the Space Force can give Firefly an alert notification, which will kick off a 60-hour window for you know everything to be integrated, fueled up, and getting ready to go. Uh, so good luck to Firefly on this next flight. We'll all be waiting to see what happens. Responsive space, a big buzzword right now. Rocket Lab's in on it too with their Electron being able to get off the ground very quickly. And uh, hopefully they can successfully get to the proper orbit this time. It'll be exciting to watch. That's all I have for you today. Let me know your thoughts on any of these news items down in the comments below. I'll be sure to check them out. Also, let me know if there's any stories I didn't manage to cover. There's always so much going on in the space industry. It's impossible to cover everything from all these different companies. So please share with me down in the comments below other big stories that you think deserve notice. If you haven't already, I hope you'll consider hitting like and subscribe. It helps out so much. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I hope you have a great week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.